Okay, so my name is Himadri, producer of electronic music, and I'm building my first modular setup from components uh, that I bought during COVID lockdown because that's uh, that's how it goes because we can't really go shopping. So I've been shipping all of it to Canada, waiting for duty, customs, faraway suppliers, and uh, buying some inexpensive components, expensive components, and just whatever I can trying to understand. So I thought I'd make this video for you to just see uh, what is going on here. Also want to mention that uh, I have a custom case being built from the tree trunk of cedars that were deforested. Um, and I can't wait to see some of those custom wooden cases. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. So here I've got basically a really nifty case, which is called the nifty case. I chose the nifty case because it was the only one that had MIDI, a quarter inch audio out, not sure what the USB is, not sure if I care, but a pretty solid uh, power button and a power supply. So it's a case with a power supply. Um, not sure if I love how small it is, but the portability makes it sweet. So if I can envision um, just a, a synthesizer that I can use to express my music, that would be great. And that's what I'm trying to build. That is my vision to have a portable, instrument that I can play. Um, I will be adding uh, expert sleepers, a couple of uh, suitable instruments, make noise and intelligent, uh, intelligel uh, components to my other racks, uh, as well as hopefully the Moog comes soon and the Roland component uh, comes soon. So here we go. I'm going to just show you how to uh, put this together if it works hopefully it works i know when i started off there was like a lot of questions so i like to talk um while i'm doing stuff so hopefully i don't know you maybe you can get something out of it okay hold on so basically there's my chest um Basically, it's been my dream to have a mod modular synth since the first vinyl record that I released um, in 1992 called Testy the Wipe, uh, which was very successful and uh, helped, uh, helped us get around and distribute through all sorts of different mediums, vinyl mostly, and uh, circulate into in through the rave scene and techno gigs and whatnot all around the world. So had a whole life and journey from that. And my dream was always to have something called the System 100. Um, now, Behringer has reissued some of the System 100, but things have come a long way since then. So uh, it's a real dream come true for that part. But my vision was to have a synthesizer company like Waldorf uh, supply the wavetable and then have modifiers from them to make an instrument that I can really play, sequence, and use from uh, Ableton, Logic, and uh, Cubase. So that is kind of like where I'm coming from. I know a lot of people, they just always oh, like the, the uniqueness and the excitement of modular, and they just have spaghetti wire, and they're just trying to make sounds, and whatever it makes, that's what they release. Um, I like the control factor. I like... Um, you know, the flexibility of the nifty case kind of had the power supply as well as the case. So the power supply um, was one intimidating factor, to be honest with you. Like there's three different types. There's minus 12, plus 12, minus five. There's also minus six, I guess. Um, so that was a bit intimidating. So I, I, I know one thing in life, start with uh, small pieces. So I started my planning. And uh, I've tried to build something that's part of the plan. Uh, the plan involves uh, kind of like markers that I could achieve. Uh, like my first step was to look at the different parts and of sound, sound synthesis. And uh, I know that I needed a, a wavetable. Uh, I just, 
I have, I own a lot of analog synthesizers on my life, Monopolies, uh, Moogs, Junos, uh, Juno 6, uh, Poly 6, TR909, TR808. So had and used everything. Then the first hybrid synths, I had some of those. First samplers, I had those. Um, Akai S612, I think was like the first sample I, I ever owned. And then I had them. Mirage, the Insonic Mirage, soon after it was released. So I've explored all the things and, uh, you know, starting with an, a, an analog oscillator and just kind of experimenting from that and finding weird stuff. It's cool and everything, but I, I think I'm, I want something that I can express my emotions and, and my feelings and my songs. So that's uh, what I'm trying to build here. So hope you can appreciate it. Hope you don't judge me from like, you know, I'm not trying to diss or anything like that. I'm just being real. Okay. So, so what I'm trying to do is by cutting, I'm going to cut to the chase. So, uh, this has MIDI. This also has two CVs, which is interface interfaceable, um, quarter inch, which is what I like. I like quarter inch. I hate mini plug. I hate micro, um, USB, but whatever. Okay, so let's just, this has CB2 out, which is, I guess we'll explore. What I've done is I've just started to lay out the basic. This might not be the final, but my basic is I need a wavetable. I love Waldorf, used the Waldorf many times. Um, it's been on some of my favorite records, uh, such as Basic Channel. Um, some of my own stuff with uh, Secret Weapon Records, Switch Records, and uh, I love Waldorf. So when I found out this has 80 of the waveforms that are legacy, uh, I just did everything I could to get one. Uh, I think I finally got one. It was hard to find. I found it in Munich from an obscure store, and then Waldorf shipped it directly with FedEx. It got here in four days after I purchased it. I was very impressed. Thank, but thank you for Waldorf and the store that sent it. Uh, then I have the Dreadbox Utopia, which is kind of acting like a mixer. I would like to have um, uh, at least a two or three voice mixed and triggered in. Now, I, I do like chords. I like expression. Um, after that, I've got an ADSR from the Holy Grail, the, the System 100. I guess not the Holy Grail. It's more like, for me, it was a dream. I remember a gig in Brooklyn at uh, this place called the gas station. Um, and I think I went to another place called the tunnel or something. I can't remember. There's so many gigs around New York back then. Um, but there was a store in, uh, in around there and they were clearing out system 100 modules and it was a big box. And I was like, $20 short or something like ridiculous. And I used to get my money from the gigs that we played cash money, uh, something, something that I call rave stacks. Rave stacks is like when you get paid by money that came in the door and it, it'll be like, instead of like a crisp, like stack of bills, nicely like pressed and like lined up. It's like wrinkled, um, you know, $5 and $10 bills that, that were in somebody's pocket or in their back pocket and crumpled up, or maybe they used it to wrap something in. And like, so rave stacks is like when you get like $500 of rave stacks. So, so I had my rave stacks and my baggy um, FDCO pants might've been snug industries, but whatever. So big, deep pockets and the money was at the bottom of the pocket rave stacks. It was all crumpled up. And I was sitting there at the store trying to, I don't even know what it was. I, it might have been a voltage control uh, filter. So I was like, wow, this would be awesome. I didn't even know how to rock it. I didn't know anything. But I had this modular module from the System 100. And it was like these pretty big boxes. I set System 100 on it. Very exciting. But I didn't get it. I was like 10 bucks short. So I ended up buying like a camera lens instead or something like that from that, that section of of uh, New York. So here I am now and Behringer's released what seems like a dream come true. From what I know, it's very similar. So here I grabbed, uh, hold on. I grabbed uh, the ADSR or the envelope 
because I like to have finer control. And I researched a lot of the envelopes and not really feeling, not really inter like, I don't know, for me, like contouring is a real precise thing. I'm not saying this is the most precise thing in the world, but it's a better way to look at the contour. So I really, you know, I like the sharp attack, but I also like controlling the release because for me, um, my music, anyone that knows it, I, I have complex sequences and often like, um, you know, interesting uh, diatonic scales and uh, harmonies that are sometimes off and kind of coming back together. So I, I like the control. So of all the ADSRs and envelopes that I could find, this one was seemed to make sense for me because it's what I know and love. Like I, everything is the TB303 and the SH101 and the, the Junos and whatnot. So Juno had this and I want to feel good about making music. I want to be able to express myself. So this is what I chose. And you know what, if you judge me because of the politics or the reputation of Behringer, I'm giving you the big finger and telling you to F off because it's, it's what I like, right? So this is, I'm doing it for me and I hope you're doing yours for you, okay? So the reason I picked the Utopia was it had the basic mixer. Now, this is a little flimsy. My buddy has the Medusa, the Dreadbox Medusa. It's built way more solid than this, but this is a little flimsy. So someone like myself, um, I still hopefully the functionality of it. Now, I already played with it. I feel like the pulserizer was kind of like very rough. It's not fine enough in terms of like the distortion. It just kind of kicks on or off, but it's there and it's kind of cool. And what this does is it changes everything from a sine wave. So you can take your signal, put it in, take it out, and then put it back into a mixer, take it from the mixer, bring it anywhere you want, or take it and uh, put it into the pulserizer or use the LFO channel, which is cool because they add another LFO. So to me, it's kind of off. Oh, so to me, it's kind of like a jackknife, which is great. I lost all my screws over here. Darn it. Sometimes I'm such a klutz. So this sucks because there's screws and parts and stuff all over the floor. And I'm just going to try to clean it up for my daughter or the vacuum cleaner does. I think I lost half my shit here. So whatever. We're going to keep going on because we don't care. And we don't need subscribers. And I don't need anyone's permission or I don't need your acceptance. I'm just filming this for me and my friends. So anyways, I picked up all my stuff. My crap's all over the place. I think I lost half my screws, but I'm still standing like the Elton John song. Okay, back to what we're doing. So not going to justify it. I also, one of my dreams was this Close Encounter ARP 2500 uh, filter. And I got this filter. I, so far, I'm not that impressed, but I don't know if I'm using it right. So this filter was pretty decent in specs and in the demos, what I saw. But so far, I'm just waiting for the Erica filter. It's got a few more dB. Um, I need at least 15 uh, dB filter sweeps for me personally. And uh, I'm a, anybody who knows my music, you know, I love resonance. I love tweaky acid. Um, not too tweaky, but I like to, I like to get up there and open it up, right? The filter. So ended up getting this. It's also kind of a dream. This is the Close Encounters 2500 that Behringer reissued. So the ARP 2500. So that's what I've got right now. Probably going to stick a Distings uh, Sleepers MK4. Uh, Detroit Underground uh, Randomizer. 
Um, I'm also waiting for a touring unit. Hopefully, I get that, which is a randomizer and uh, sequencer, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but I will need to kind of like fit it in here. So, just backing this whole thing up, this is an 84 unit uh, case. It's an 84 unit. It's a little small. I've got kind of like a non standard size. So, I might be able to stick two, three HPs in here. But I don't need a power supply because it came with it. So in a way, you're kind of like saving three. This behind there, it says Behringer on it, is a 104. That's, I think, more of the practical one. And it's a rack space. So I can fit it into like some of the road stuff. I don't know if you can see, see that there. That's like a road case. That's a 19 unit. You can't see it at all because of the contrast. But... Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's be below the blue box. So, yeah. So, that's kind of like what uh, we're dealing with. Um, but, yeah, that's why I like the 19-inch. Just regular rack case size. It'd be nice to, like, travel with it. Back to this. So, let's get started. So, another intimidating thing was the power cables because no one really – told me so I like the fact that some of the companies already have it on and have like a plastic cap which fixes it so that you can't put it in wrong because it's intimidating like the Waldorf one didn't have that so you're like you've got this kind of moment where like is it going to work or is it going to blow up so I didn't have that so that was really cool so I'm going to just stick this in not sure if putting the mixer in first is the best, but let's see. You know what I say? Let's do it. Also, I'd like to dedicate dropping my screws on the floor to my boy, Matt. And Murat, who played a killer set yesterday for the memorial party called Remember, which was on stream, dedicated to a couple of mutual friends of everybody in the Detroit area, Tim Baker and Jason from Detour. We owe a lot to those guys, so it was really good to hear some really good tech, though. I lost all my screws dropping that shit, so fuck it. Let's just put these in. Uh, this music here is really bad, so sorry about that. It's the only crap that's hooked up right now because I'm trying to build this, so I hate this stuff right here. I don't even know why this is playing. It's like the electronic stream from some random thing. So I'm going to use these. These are nice. I heard uh, another guy talk about these uh, these thumb screws. They are pretty nice. It's nice to be able to thumb them in, but I don't like the hexakey business. Not cool, man. Use Richards. I'd like to get my Bosch drill out, you know? Use that 16, 16 volt drill. Okay, whatever. So here we go. So that's in there. Now I'm just going to hit the power switch again. Whoops, plug it in again. Let's see. This music is so bad. Oh my God. This is the kind of crap that I hate. It gives uh, the new generation millennials and kids that are making music gives you guys a bad rep because this is the crap that you guys listen to. Come at me. So that's working. Look, I got an LFO. It's blinking. Nice. We got the rate of the LFO. Looking good. I got a light over here. I'm going to turn it back off. 
Oh my god, I hate buildups like this. Trance Nation. I should probably love it because this is the kind of stuff that'll get 30,000 people jumping up and down mindlessly, but I guarantee they do not buy the record that they were jumping up and down. So that's why I like about techno is it's more of a community. So now I have can't believe I dropped all my screws. That sucks. Then I'm going to put my ADSR. So first, I'm going to look at this. This one actually has a plastic outside to protect it, so I can't go wrong. However, I uh, I don't have the cable for it. One second. One thing I like about the nifty box, see how flush everything is? It goes in very professionally. And that is why I love pre-drilled rails. So when you're looking for rails, make sure that um, they have a mount or ears or whatever brackets that they come with. Because a lot of these companies um, don't have that information. And when I was trying to build and work with this other company that's building the case for me, um, it just doesn't seem like they they uh, they know how to communicate what's needed. Anyways, let's go on to the next part, okay?